Balliger here. The fact that you're listening to this broadcast means you have a high curiosity coefficient. That is, you have a growth mindset for learning, which puts you in the top 0.1% of physicians who are trying to better know the discipline of medicine, a discipline that is characterized by complexity and amb- ambiguity. This podcast is on to the possible role of colchicine in COVID-19. I was discussing with Dr. Lloyd Vincent, MD, co-founder, director, and chief medical officer of Africa Healthcare Network. He's a senior nephrologist, and he mentioned to me that in Dar es Salaam, where he is currently now, that there is no availability of biologics like toslizumab to ameliorate the inflammation seen in COVID-19. So, innovation is inherent in Dr. Lloyd Vincent's approach to medicine and he scoped the literature and is using colchicine to manage COVID-19 infections in his patients. His rationale was that colchicine, an alkaloid, has been used for centuries in acute gouty arthritis. And in the last 50 years, it has been employed for an increasing number of conditions, including familial Mediterranean fever, Bechet syndrome, Sweet syndrome, scleroderma, amyloidosis, and even liver cirrhosis. In acute gout, consciousness is effective in elevating the acute attack and as a prophylactic medication. In Bechet's disease, Cochicin is effective mainly in the treatment of erythema nodosum, arthritis, and mucosal ulcers, especially in female genitalia. In scleroderma, it may decrease the stiffness of the skin, whereas in amyloidosis, it may improve proteinuria and result in regression of amyloid deposition in cases where the, these fibers are deposited. Perhaps the most effective results of colchicine therapy has been obtained in the prophylaxis of familial Mediterranean fever. In this disease, it prevents the occurrence of acute inflammatory episodes and fends off the development of amyloidosis. Specifically, the anti-inflammatory effect of colchicine has been attributed to its disruption of microtubules in neutrophils, thereby inhibiting their migration towards chemotactic factors. Moreover, colchicine may also alter the distribution of adhesion molecules on the surface of both neutrophils and endothelial cells, leading to significant inhibition of interaction between white blood cells and endothelial cells, interfering with their transmigration. In addition, colchicine prevents NLRP3 inflammasome assembly thereby reducing the release of IL-1b and other interleukins, including IL-6. And why is this important? Viroporin E, a component of SARS-CoV-2, forms CA2C permeable ion channels and activates NLRP3 inflammasome. So colchicine, by preventing NLRP3 inflammasome assembly, is a potent inhibitor of interleukins. Given to date, no treatments have been definitely shown to be life-saving. A multi-pronged approach to mitigate morbidity, mortality, and transmission is warranted. In lower and middle-income countries, and even in high-income countries, Colchicine may be a promising option. A quick search of clinicaltrials.gov had listed at least 10 independent studies evaluating the benefit of colchicine in patients with COVID-19. And these centers include UCSF, Montreal Heart Institute, NYU, Menemides Medical Center, Hospital Universitario La Paz, Madrid, Spain, 
hospitals in Argentina, Iran, and Milan, Italy. In addition, the acronym the Greek study from National and Campus Dysterian University of Athens, the consortium of UCSF, NYU, and Montreal Heart Institute, and Hospital Universitario La Paz in Madrid, Spain. The acronym of that study is called CORONA. The findings of the study are eagerly awaited because colchicine is affordable and not expensive as biologics like tolicizumab. Another reason for the promise is that low-dose colchicine was shown to be efficacious and safe after myocardial infarction in, in a study published in the New England Journal of Medicine in December 2019. Among patients with recent MI or myocardial infarction, colchicine at a dose of 0.5 mg led to a significantly lower risk of ischemic cardiovascular events than placebo. However, in the study of 4,745 patients, pneumonia was reported as a serious adverse event in 0.9% of the patients in the colchicin group and in 0.4% of those in the placebo group, p-value was equal to 0.03. So in a nutshell, the approach to the COVID pandemic has been social distancing, hygiene, and for the individual patient to limit viral replication with drugs such as remdesivir, and by controlling the pathological immune response to the virus by using anti-inflammatories, including biologics, such as tocilizumab, which inhibits IL-6, and esulizumab, which inhibits complement, Jack inhibitors like bercitinib and chemokine receptor inhibitors like leronimab are potential therapies for COVID-19. In conclusion, IL-1 inhibitors, IL-6 inhibitors, Jack inhibitors, chemokine receptor blockers, and even colchicin are promising therapeutic targets meriting rapid investigation, multidisciplinary collaboration with experts in hematology, infectious diseases, inflammation, tissue damage, and repair and resolution is paramount.